feel a little lost, don't feel bad because people go through several years of school for a degree in this sort of thing. You're about to hear from one of them, a professor at Coastal Carolina University. But before we dive in here, there are some key terms that you need to know first. We have the Soviet Union, which is during the Cold War, the countries that acted as one body. Next, we have NATO, which is the military alignments agreement that has uh, around 30 countries, including the United States. And finally, sanctions, which is taking away financial or trade resources. I want to urge Americans to start learning the geography of Eastern Europe. The first step, Coastal Carolina professor Dr. Joseph Fitsanaka says you need to understand Russia's invasion and its effect on the U.S. During the Cold War, Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, but gained their independence when the war ended in 1991. And it's been there now independent, as an independent country for 30 years, and Russia is now attempting to get it back. That involves the U.S. because the military alliance, NATO which um, has agreed among its, among its members that if one gets attacked, all have to run to their rescue. Now, Ukraine is not a member of NATO, but it borders four NATO countries, including Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, etc., um, many of which, or most of which, used to be parts of the sort of Eastern Bloc, the Soviet-dominated bloc back in the Cold War. If they continue, America is going to have to get involved in the war. There isn't a single person in Moscow or Washington that wants to see a war between the superpowers because the superpowers may end up uh, using nuclear weapons. So that would be catastrophic for the future of humanity, not just those two countries. So instead of fighting, the prevention measure is to apply pressure through money. Well, the United States is first trying to push Russia back, basically leading the world in crippling sanctions, economic sanctions. So America, I think, is going to try to cripple it economically and put pressure on the Russian people to put pressure on their government to stop the war. The only fa factor here that can stop this war at this point is the Russian people themselves. He says the only question left, will Russia stop at Ukraine or will they invade another country? Gas stations, retail shops and restaurants are all along this boulevard. Many of the businesses have signs that read now hiring. Well, one Dillon County man says all of these jobs, that is great, but he says the county still needs jobs that pay more money. The face of Dillon County is changing when it comes to economic development. Just take a look at Radford Boulevard. There are more places to eat and convenience stores than ever before, and that means more jobs. We need jobs here. Um, the more we get, the better off that you know we'll be with everything. Dillon County leaders tell me economic development has really taken off since the inland port opened here in 2018. Officials say they've seen more than 1,000 jobs come to Dillon County through new companies and expansions at existing plants. Officials tell me Harbor Freight has expanded twice since the inland port came to town. It's now Dillon County's largest employer with nearly 1,500 workers. Kevin Joarhorn says he loves all the new jobs but believes the county needs higher paying jobs so that people can really start to improve their quality of life. We need about five to ten more good plants like Harbor Freight around here and we can start servicing the public to where they can provide for their family He says until Dillon County lands jobs that pay upwards of about $20 an hour, it is going to be very hard for families to make ends meet. Now, I talk with county leaders about his concern, and they say there are some plants that pay between $17 and $18 an hour. He says you can make more at that plant, at those plants, depending on how long you've worked there.